Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. I left a few days ago, I think a week ago, on the community tab a post asking you guys to send me some questions for a Q&A. And I have here 23 questions so far. I think I had even more, but I can't seem to find the community tab anywhere. So I wrote down, I think, almost all the questions and on this video I'm gonna answer them for you. What I want to do so that not only you can get to know me better, but I can get to know you better, is that if you like any of the questions, you can answer them below in the comments. So if you wanna answer a few of these questions and you wanna do multiple comments or edit the comment that you already did or whatnot, I would love to get to know you guys better as well. So there are personal questions, makeup questions, uh, pet questions, dreams questions, and project questions. So I have a lot for you guys today and I don't know how long this video is gonna be but I'm gonna put a timer on my Apple Watch so that I can just not make this a crazy long video because I'm a talker. So if you guys wanna see this Q&A and you wanna know the answer to some of your questions then just keep on watching. When do you think your no buy will be over? The truth is that my no buy was over last year. So I finished my no buy on, uh, before 2020 started, I think. It was December 31st of 2019. It was one year of a no buy. And what I said was that I wanted to keep doing sort of a no buy or a low buy and just purchase stuff really thinking about it. So conscientious purchases and not just, like I have certain rules for myself that are not maybe not public that I don't want to buy a lot of blushes I don't want to buy a lot of bronzers I don't want to buy foundation I want to have only certain amount of concealers certain amount of foundations but I'm not in a no buy I'm gonna be in a permanent low buy for the rest of my life unless I'm a billionaire and I have just crazy money to spend on makeup but the reason why I do project pants is because there's no way that I can go through this makeup and I don't love wasting my money. And if I buy products and I don't use them, I'm basically throwing money out. So that's the reason why I'm in a permanent low buy. Will you ever do a makeup collection video? I think I will. I think I will. I just don't know how to film it. But I've been doing a makeup inventory videos, so I've been filming parts of my makeup collection so that you guys can see it, or my makeup collection in parts or in, in episodes. I already filmed a few episodes of the makeup collection video so that you guys can see in depth what I have, but I don't know if you're referring to a beauty room tour or just showing you my drawers and stuff like that instead of showing you each product. Hooded eyes and how to do makeup on them. I want to do a how-to series and just do something like a makeup artistry series. I, at one point, I was starting to do that, but then I just stopped. I want to get back to it. So I will have a separate video on that, but two tips that I can give you is just focus everything in the outer parts, depending on your eye shape, because, because hooded includes a multitude of eye shapes. And you can focus on the outer corner if you want to give depth to your eyes, but never on this part because then you will make your eyes smaller. And then if you're hooded and you have lit space, always cheat your crease to be a fake crease on top of your real crease so that you can make your eyes look bigger. Recommendations for blush and bronzer for pale skin. I think for blushes, I have three right here, but it depends on your undertone and what you love to use. Uh, Laura Mercier Fresco, which is a neutral tone, and you can build it up so it shows up on my skin, it shows up in someone deeper than me, but these are easy not to mess up with. So these are not the most highly pigmented blushes. As soon as you put the brush in them, you're not gonna look like a clown, so they're really easy to work with. So any of the Laura Mercier blushes um, that are in the lighter tones, they, they will work for you. This one, if you like a luminous blush, this is the ambient lighting, strobe lighting blush in the shade Brilliant Nude. This basically, to show up on my skin, I have to build it. I know I light skin tone, so this will look beautiful on fair skin, for sure. And then one that I think that a lot of people don't mention anymore, but it's good, good for people that do not want a super pigmented blush, is Dandelion by Benefit. I have the small size one. 
this is not the type of blush that will show up like a crazy pink on your skin it will show up more like a flush a natural flush to the face and for bronzer the same thing I love to use for a contour shade the Kevin Aucoin in light and then for a bronzer you can grab the Hula light or use the regular Hula with an extremely extremely light hand and then also the chocolate milk soleil bronzer by Too Faced those are my favorite bronzers to use on my makeup artistry kit how to avoid cake face when you do your makeup or cake under or cakey under eyes for me skin prep is everything you need to moisturize your face according to your skin type and then for the eyes most people get cakiness right here less is more always uh, color correct so that you don't apply or over apply concealer and then always use an eye cream because I can't tell you how many times I've seen people with super super dry on their eyes and they blame the concealer but it, but the truth is that they have so so much dryness under their eyes that no concealer will fight against that I will leave a few products below but the face base by Bobbi Brown is amazing and they have an eye cream as well the avocado creamy eye cream that's just insane by Kiehl's that's really moisturizing so I would highly recommend it the Yves Lom eye cream it's wonderful as well and it's thinner and then do a skincare routine at night and that will help you a lot with dehydration or to need less hydration in the morning new makeup goal for 2021 is to shop my stash more I want to do a shop my stash project I didn't want to spoil it for you guys but it's no secret I want to do a shop my stash project and that would be certainly a monthly video and I will keep working on my finances as permanent project in my life but a shop my stash project while doing project pants will be my main focus for my channel next year Top 5 recommendations for someone that wants to start a no buy in 2021 is to just be honest with yourself and be true to yourself on what you want. So write why you want to do a no buy next year. Maybe it's because you have too much makeup. Maybe it's because you're going into debt because you're buying too much makeup. Each of us can have different reasons why we go into a no buy. My reason was because I had so much makeup and makeup wasn't enough I was just purchasing so I was basically addicted to shopping makeup even though I love it I was addicted to shopping it and then also I was going into debt for it and that didn't make any sense so if you write the reasons why you want to do a no buy that can be the first step to start a no buy because it will open your eyes to what you're doing be realistic and what I mean is okay so if you have 30 foundations of course you're not gonna need to purchase a foundation maybe you only have one black liner and you go through black liner so give room or give yourself a few rules that you can follow maybe it's only buy one palette for the year even if it's a no buy if you only buy one product of each category maybe that would be a rule that will work for you but have rules for me I wanted to do basically a no buy completely but my only rule was that if I sold makeup that I had on my makeup collection then I could purchase makeup only spending that amount of money that I that are of the makeup that I sold another thing that you can do is just stop following trend mood and Sephora and just remove every notification from your email it takes some time I did this for I think about three months of my no buy and then I refollowed them and I already had like strength in my muscles not to go crazy and purchase stuff you can also accompany the no buy with a project so I not only had a no buy project I also had uh, in mind a few goals for my finances and I also was doing a project progress type of series which was a shop my stash and I think I was doing one project pan but I was mostly shopping my stash for makeup that I wanted to use so I think I gave you the five tips already but for me those are the basic tips for a no buy dogs or cats okay so I have three dogs and one cat I love both my pets are my life they're my my children if I had to choose between both of them I'm a dog person I just love the way dogs interact with their owners and how they choose you and how they are just they're harder in a way because you have to take them out 
more often. Cats, you only have a litter box and put them put food and water for them and they're independent and they're easier for sure as a pet. But I prefer dogs because they are, it's like they're looking at your soul in a way. They are just perfect for me. I adore my dogs. And maybe one of the reasons why I'm telling you guys this, I've had cats and dogs over the years, but my cat right now, she's just something else. She doesn't like people. She doesn't even like me and I love her. So. She will love me when she will love me and she will just hate me when I'm touching her or when I'm petting her. She's just extremely independent. So, and sometimes I want to cuddle her and love her and she won't allow it. And my dogs, they just go crazy over me. They just, we have a, we have a strong relationship and I love petting my dogs. So I guess dogs is my answer. Favorite full coverage, foundation, and then concealer, face powder, bronzer, and blush. So if I had to choose a foundation, my favorite foundation full coverage is the Estee Lauder Double Wear for sure. It's been a staple. I use it on my makeup artistry kit. I adore it, and I adore the shade range. It's great for oily skin. It's not that great for um, dry skin unless you mix it with a moisturizer. Then for concealer, my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer is my all-time favorite and if I had to switch it up, I would grab the Too Faced Concealer, but my NARS is still my favorite. For face powder, I adore the Laura Mercier powder because it holds my oils and that for me is a must. As a bronzer, my Hula bronzer is definitely my favorite bronzer of all time and if I had to choose another one, it would be my Chocolate Soleil by Too Faced. And for blush, Mm, this makes me struggle a little bit but my favorite blush of all time it's Matley. the one that I finish the most is Orgasm by NARS those are both from NARS and then I've been going crazy over, over Laura Mercier Chai Laura Mercier Fresco Becca Wild Honey and Becca Sunbird those are favorite blushes I can't choose one blush it's just not fair but Matley has been my favorite for years now and Orgasm is the blush that I've used the most over the years and I've used up the most of them over the years. Can you imagine being a stylist for the rest of your life or is there something else you want to try out? So okay, I don't know, I don't know in English if you say stylist for the same thing. I'm a makeup artist and I'm an image consultant personal stylist and personal shopper. So I'm not a stylist in the sense that I do hair and makeup. I don't do hair, I only do makeup. So that's why I call myself only a makeup artist. And then I'm a personal stylist and image consultant. That means that I help people with their personal image and how they, how they basically project, give first impressions, successful first impressions to other people, how they should dress to and for a new job, for an interview, for their life, just to dress for success, basically. That's what I do as an image consultant. I wouldn't change it for anything. I went to law school and then I didn't love law school. And when I moved to New York, I went to image consulting school. I fell in love with makeup since I was 14. So I started to make it my profession or part of my profession and it goes hand in hand with image consulting so my job is my dream job so I wouldn't change it for anything I wouldn't do anything else it's just something that I adore and I chose to do and nothing matters I would still choose my two jobs every day so yeah I can imagine being an image consultant for the rest of my life and a makeup artist for the rest of my life both of them I wouldn't choose one over the other I love both of them Favorite subject in school when you were younger? So I went to school here in Barranquilla, Colombia. So it, was a, it wasn't a bilingual school. It was just a regular school. And then um, my favorite subject was English. I fell in love with English when I was younger and I just loved it. I was in love with the Backstreet Boys. So I wanted to know what their songs said. And I was just crazy writing the lyrics. We didn't use internet then so i would just listen to them and write the lyrics as i as they sounded in spanish basically so i would write spanglish <laughs> and uh, i wanted to know what they meant i wanted to know everything about it so then i would grab the little book the lyrics book that came with the cds and then i would grab a dictionary and would look for the words and that way I would know the meaning of the songs. So English was definitely my favorite subject when I went to high school. And when I went to law school, 
my favorite subject was was criminal law and then when i went to image consulting school and then did and then did my masters as a public image consultant um, what i loved the most was uh, physical image or personal shopping or being a personal stylist that's basically my main thing so that's what i love the most different subjects different times different careers so yeah why did you decide to move to Colombia and would you still be working as a stylist and makeup artist if you were in New York? For sure, for sure. So I was living in New York and then I was living in Florida, so close to Miami. Pompano Beach was the name of the of the place where I was living, of the city where I was living. And then I moved uh, back here to Colombia. I moved, I moved here be because my husband didn't have papers to work there and we were just desperate in a way. I wouldn't do it the same way that we did at that time because we just messed a few things up. But that's the reason why we moved and I wanted to take a break. I, I had so many jobs. I was waitressing. I was working as a manager as a Pilates, uh, a Pilates studio. I also was working as a hostess in a restaurant and I was working seven days a week while trying to build up my clientele in Florida. So it was really hard for me. I was just uh, desperate, sad, was getting depressed, and that's why I moved here. But if I could turn back time, I wouldn't do that again. And if I was living in New York, of course, no, it doesn't matter where I go, I would still be a makeup artist and an image consultant, for sure. Where do you live and what do you like the most about the place you live in or the area that you live in? Okay, I live in Barranquilla, Colombia. I don't love it here, I have to be honest, but what I love the most about being here, and you can make you can make the best out of a place that you don't want to live in. I grew up here, but it wasn't the place of my dreams. My dream place was always New York. So what I love the most about the place that I live in is that you can take time to just stop and smell the flowers. I live in a place where you don't make your job your only thing and you don't get to stop and enjoy things. That's what was happening to me when I was living in the US. It was only work, 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 work. And that's not a good way to live. If I would move back, which I'm hoping that at some point I will, I will not take it that way. But uh, then again, I've been building my clientele internationally right now. So if I move, I will not have to do that. I will still be able to work in what I work and I wouldn't have to just find jobs that I didn't love in order to only live to support myself. That doesn't make any sense for me. And I didn't want to move back here. This is the place where I grew up. But you have to know that anywhere you are in the world, you can enjoy it. So I love the food here. I love that I have a three bedroom apartment and I have my dogs and my cats. And I, it's not a hassle for me to find a house where I can have dogs and cats without spending some crazy amount of money. Um, I adore the food. Adore it. And then also I have my family close by, which sometimes is a plus and sometimes you know how families are when they're loud and they're Latin. You want them sort of a far away but close but close by in the same <laughs> in the same span of time. Um, I'm happy that I'm close to my dad, to my mom, my brother, and my brother just had a baby, so I was able to be close to my niece, to my sister-in-law. I love a lot of things. But it's not the place where I would have pictured myself a few years ago. When I moved to New York, I thought it, that was it. That was my dream place. So I thought I was going to stay. And maybe I'm hoping that I will be able to come back. If you could choose a dish or food that you would recommend to someone, what would it be? A favorite dish or food? So right now, right now, because it changes. I used to love uh, Italian food when I was not keto. But then after I started doing keto, I still love Italian dishes, but without pasta. So I would switch it with aubergines. I think that's how you call them. Yeah, I'm hoping that that's how you call them. Um, so my favorite dish or my favorite thing right now to eat is just to grab, um, to grab a skillet, just put butter in it, then a few aubergines and salt and pepper, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, let it, I don't know how you say that, but you can make a reduction of balsamic vinegar. If not, I couldn't eat it. And then put a few tomatoes in the skillet, put 
Parmesan cheese and eat that. That for me, it's my perfect dish right now because I discovered it about two weeks ago. I started just grabbing what was on my on my refrigerator and that I came up with that and I'm obsessed. But then my favorite, my favorite dish that I can eat a lot is lasagna and is um, aubergine, bacon, chicken, cheese or different cheeses parmesan cheese and that's a lasagna that I would make with white sauce because that's keto and I adore it. And if we were talking about a place then in New York there's a place, it's an Argentinian place, it's called El Almacén and I would buy empanadas as an appetizer. They had an appetizer with different flavors of empanadas and then as a main course I would buy the churrasco with papitas fritas or, or potato fries and then the dessert was called I think chocolate and it was a chocolate pudding it was a I don't know how you call that but here you call it a uh, volcan de chocolate which is that you split it in the middle and then it comes all gooey inside it has it's a chocolate cake but when you split it it has melted chocolate in the middle and then they had a size of dulce de leche ice cream and that's my perfect, perfect meal. Every time I go to New York, I have to go there, even if I'm on my own. It's my favorite restaurant, and that's my favorite thing to eat. Favorite book. These, again, um, I have a few favorite books, but now, at the moment, this year, I've loved The Scent Keeper and The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. Those have been my favorite, but once in December, I think it's another book that I love. I love the Harry Potter series. I love Twilight. If I had to choose one, one saga, it would be the Twilight saga because I read it when I was having a tough time emotionally. And then after reading that, I haven't been able to stop reading. So it opened my eyes to a world of books that I knew before randomly when I was reading the Harry Potter books when I was growing up, while I was growing up. But I wasn't a constant reader. Now I read almost every single day. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. So what are your hobbies besides makeup or YouTube? I love to read. That's my one of my favorite things. And then I also I have a planner. And for some people that's not um that's not a hobby, but I love decorating my planner with stickers. That's something that makes me feel so relaxed. Then I also love going to the movies. Not that this year we have been able to. Uh, watching movies. I adore movies and uh, series and stuff like that. I love reading and if I can't read because I'm super busy, I will listen to a book in Audible. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a vet. I wanted to help animals and I wanted that until the 11th grade. So it was something that I always dreamt of. I don't know what happened. I, I had a, a boyfriend when I was in high school and I thought we were gonna be together forever, you know, all the drama. And he went to law school and law school was sort of my second choice. So I decided that since I didn't want to go to veterinary school here in Colombia because it just doesn't work the same um, and I didn't want to leave my relationship behind, I just wanted to stay and go to law school. So that's what I did. But if not, I would be a pet and I would love that for sure. I, I love animals. I adore my pets. How did you meet your husband? Well, we met when we were in high school, but nothing happened then. Like we were just... I knew his name, he knew my name, and that was it. I sort of at one point had a crush on him, but that was it. And then when I was living in New York, right before I moved uh, from New York, out of New York, he got in touch with me through Instagram, and we started talking then. But we met in high school. He was in a different class than mine. I was in 11th grade, and he was in, a, in 10th grade. So he was basically younger than me by one year but not really, we're the same age. Lots of friends or close ones, close ones for sure. I have, I can count my friends with one hand. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm friendly with a lot of people and I have, I, I have met beautiful women with my career, a lot of beautiful women, but I only have a few friends and I prefer it that way. I prefer to have a close circle than a lot of friends that you mean nothing to. 
Do you ever get comments about not having children? And if so, how do you answer to that or handle those comments? I am a sweetheart when I want to be, or I'm a sweetheart unless you make me um, feel threatened or you are just being nosy. So for me, for me, my advice to you is I always speak with the truth. So when people, even my parents, if they ask me, why don't you have children? You should have children right now. I always tell them, well, because I'm the one who's going to support them and I'm the one who's going to pay for them and I'm the one who's going to have to put things aside to have babies. It's not something that I want right now. And it's not something that's crazy when you don't have that maternal instinct. Some some women are born with it. Some I my sister-in-law, she just had a baby and we would talk, we're friends and we would talk and she would say, "Since I was little, I dreamt about having four babies and I always when I see a kid, I just go crazy over it. I didn't I I haven't felt that ever. At some point when I was younger, I wanted to have four kids, right? But I never had this feeling in my gut that it was something that was my dream and my everything. No, and I'm sure that when and if I have kids, I would love them like crazy. I love my dogs like crazy. So that means that of course, if I have a baby or if I adopt a baby, I would love it like nothing else and like no one else and I would be the greatest mom to that baby. But I don't feel it right now. I don't feel like I want to. Maybe I will, maybe I will sooner rather than later because it's something that I've been talking about with my husband, but it's not because I have this yearning sensation in my heart that I want to, and that's my business. And nobody should be judgmental when it comes to that because we all have different dreams, different things that we want to accomplish, different things that are bothering us right now or different things that are taking us down in a few ways like finances for example if you're not great when it comes to your finances or if you have made mistakes when it comes to your finances maybe you feel like it's not the time to have kids and that's okay nobody can tell you when the right time is you will set the right time for it and maybe it will never be perfect for you to have babies and maybe you won't even want them or have them and that's okay too but maybe you will just decide to have them, but it will be in your timeline. I can't stretch this enough. I find it to be so rude when people ask me, like, when are you gonna have a baby? Why don't you have a baby? You're too old and then you will not enjoy your babies. Like, it's not your problem. If you're not gonna support my baby, if you're not paying for my stuff, if you're not, if you're not supporting me financially, then you have no right to ask me about babies or when I'm gonna be pregnant. You have no right over my body. That's just the main thing. So don't feel shy about it. People should feel bad about asking all the time about that and they don't, so don't feel bad about answering. Um, I don't handle it the best way, to be honest. I always answer what I have in my, what I have on my mind. I think even more so since I'm here in Barranquilla and I speak Spanish. I speak my mind always. My mom always said that I had no filter and that's true. So always say what comes out of your heart and don't feel bad about telling people to stay out of your business. Do you like snow and cold weather? I prefer cold weather for sure. Snow, I thought it was gonna be so wonderful when I moved to New York, but maybe because it was in the city, you only see that the trees look beautiful and the winter is beautiful I adore it but you only see um, as if you had a tile floor and ice fell through the tile floor you were barefoot with your feet dirty and then you put your feet in it and it looks like a mess on the floor that for me was snow I wasn't experiencing it the way that I thought it would be because of the movies and stuff the place where I live in is humidity of 100% all year round and it's extremely hot all year round so yeah I do love cold weather it's one of the things that I hate the most about Barranquilla it's too hot and too humid I hate it for sure that the weather is the thing that I hate the most about living here I love cold weather I'm not crazy about snow but if, if cold weather comes with snow I prefer it over anything 
and then a five-year plan, work, family, etc. goals. I truly don't have a five-year plan uh, per se. I don't have it written down. I have goals written down, but not a five-year plan. So I see myself maybe with two kids in five years, maybe because I'm still deciding whether I wanna have kids or not, but if I do, in five years I will have two. Then for my job, I wanna have, I wanna be booked for my image consulting, the full consultation, because I have smaller consultations, I wanna be booked all year round. I wanna be able to work more as a fashion stylist, and I wanna work always as an entrepreneur. I don't wanna belong to anyone or to any company. Uh, my mind is set about that. I wanna be living, it depends on my dogs, to be honest. I wanna be living either in New York, or I wanna move to some place in the US where I can have a house and have my dogs because I have three Akita, Japanese Akita dogs and they're huge and I know that New York has tiny apartments and if I wanna have babies, I wanna have my dogs because I wouldn't leave them behind. I have to have space for them to be able to run and enjoy the cold weather finally. For me, that would be that. I would love to have an apartment or a house depending on where I move. Uh, if I go to New York, I would rent for sure. There's no way that I could afford an apartment in New York. But if I move to any other place, I know that I would definitely be on the way to buying a house or I would have already purchased a house and would be paying it. I think those are my goals. And then wherever I go, depending on the timeline of when I move, uh, I would love to have built back my makeup clientele because my image consulting clientele, I can I can keep building it online and I can be booked. It doesn't matter. I will be building my business online and it will be as if I was in any place in the world. But my makeup business is something different because I have to let people know that I'm in an area. So that for me would be the goal, like a random few goals. Since I don't know yet a few things about the papers for my husband and stuff like that, I can't have an exact timeline or plan. Uh, but that's my that's my sacando cuentas alegres like we say here like uh, doing crazy math that's uh, how I see it and that's what my plan would look like okay you guys so that's it for this video this is gonna be a long one but it's gonna be fun to edit because I made so many mistakes with the answers that I had to repeat myself it was so nice doing this video I think I'm gonna do it every six months so that you guys can get to know me better so even if you leave a question below if you want me to just write it down for a QA, and a always let me know below because I would love to keep doing these videos and letting you guys know me a little bit better because sometimes we uh, we get an idea about someone just because of a few things that they say but we don't really know them and it's nice to get to know your YouTubers or the people that you watch or your content creators or your favorite content creators. And it's nice for me to get to know you back. So yeah, don't forget to answer some of the questions below. I love you, you guys. Just leave a question mark as an emoji today if you watch the entire video. Um, let me know or just let's make the comment section um, a chatty comment section for this video. And I love you and I guess I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.